I have long had a dream, ever since I was a young lad, to become royalty. The desire to rule over my subjects with cruelty and corruption seen by few before me. Unfortunately, I am not from such a family. Thus, I cannot be royalty. However, I can still be called a lord. My unwarranted self-importance deserves the title that I believe is justified. And that's where established titles the sponsor of this video comes into play. It's based on the Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds, or lords and ladies in English. A purchase can give you the right to at least one square foot of dedicated land in a private estate, thus allowing you a noble decree. With every purchase from established titles, you will receive this commemorative plaque and certification proclaiming you as a lord, lady, or a laird. There is a seal of approval signifying your lordship, and there is the plot of land where you can identify where you own land in Scotland. And as you will now see, I will now be known as Lord Tree, first of his name, son of the Peeing Willow. And you will now refer to me as such, or else you will be punished by death. Or at least I'd like to think that. Every purchase from established titles helps support conservation efforts in Scotland and all across the globe. They have partnered with One Tree Planet and Trees for the Future to help in this cause. When you purchase a title, they will plant a tree to preserve the fine woodlands around the world. Think of it like buying a share of the Green Bay Packers. But instead of crippling emptiness, you help environmental efforts. Established Titles is currently having an extended New Year's sale on top of an additional 10% off any purchase you make with discount code UTREE. Click the link below or go to establishedtitles.com slash UTREE and use promo code UTREE to earn the savings to go with your title. If you're like me and have unrealized needs for respect and adulation, why not earn the decree of Lord or Lady? With established titles, that dream can become a glorious reality. Lord Tree will now begin the main video. When you think of the greatest games in NFL history, what do you think of? The catch? The ice bowl? The immaculate reception? 28-3? The comeback? There's a common theme. One team's glory is another's tragedy. Regardless of how well they played. This past Sunday, we had one of those matches. Normally, I tend to go for the more tongue-in-cheek games that are so terrible that they're worthy of song. But this one? This is a contest we'll be talking about for a very long time to come. This was true greatness. There was only one location of such history and pride to be worthy of hosting such an event. Arrowhead Stadium. I know it's called GEHA Field at Arrowhead now, but I don't give a shit. We know it is Arrowhead like we know Buffalo's home as Ralph Wilson Stadium. It has been the home of many great games in the past. Some great for the Kansas City Chiefs, some outright tragic for them. This year the goal is to maintain their pace at the top of the mountain. Despite struggles in the early part of the season, the Chiefs overcame their issues and adjusted back to the offensive dynamo they once were. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Did you seriously believe they had a shot? Don't make them laugh. The sheer audacity of such a statement as Patrick Mahomes throws spirals for majestic touchdowns is a punitive measure. Last week may have been a cupcake matchup, but their next opponent will be a heavyweight contender. The Buffalo Bills know all about Kansas City. They came to this sacred ground last season in the AFC Championship game. The Bills were hoping for an upset, but the Chiefs were simply the better team that day. A season later, they have picked themselves up off the ground and are eager for revenge. Josh Allen has been a man possessed as of late. He may be one of the few things keeping the offense running, but he's very, very hard to stop. Both in the air and on the ground. Poor, poor New England, no one cries. Their absolute destruction in Buffalo was a delight to those that were kept down by a Patriot boot for decades. The time of old empire is up. Now it's their turn. They want the Chiefs. They want to prove they are the new leaders of the AFC. Everyone has this game circled on the calendar. A clash worthy of a far more prestigious title than an AFC Divisional Round match. This is worthy of at least 20 of those matinee skirmishes. Night falls on Kansas City, and the match is to begin. The Chiefs are slight favorites and many are anticipating a good matchup. But little did they all know they would get that and more. Buffalo receives the ball first, and as they move down the field they run into a fourth and short situation. The Bills know what to do. Trust the offense. So go for it, they do. And Josh Allen converts. The first salvo has been fired. With this momentum, Buffalo chips away at Kansas City's advantage thanks to smart play calling and deception. But there's another fourth down situation at hand. If you did it near midfield, why not do it at the goal line? 
Devin Singletary responds to the challenge. A touchdown is their reward. A statement of authenticity. Buffalo has come to play. There's a reason why they had to go balls out on that drive. Patrick Mahomes is fucking Houdini. It does not matter what they throw at him or how they scheme. He will overcome it. By either his arm or his legs. Buffalo's defense is strong. Some say one of the strongest in football. But Mahomes does not care. He will lead the Chiefs to a touchdown in response with another impressive drive. Anything Allen can do, he can do better. Josh Allen took this as a challenge. You think the mere parlor tricks of mortals are enough to bedazzle the Bills offense? Will any defense ever make a stop? That answer is a very shocking yes. Defense? In this NFL? That's probably illegal. Worst of all, Buffalo has to punt. For the first time in these playoffs. Forcing a punter to work? That's also probably illegal. Pinned at their one yard line, the Chiefs can do nothing and are forced to punt as well. This needs to stop for the power of offense, but Buffalo is stuffed as well. We must be patient. It's only a matter of time before these potent attacks eventually break through. And Mahomes is the first to answer the call. Clyde Edwards Hilaire is back from injury. And every man is needed on the battlefield. The goal line is the only thing standing in their way. Do you think you can sack Mahomes? Of course not. Touchdown, Kansas City. The Wyoming howitzer sits on the sidelines and devises his next plan. Less than two minutes left on the clock, it does not matter. Wave after wave of assaults tiring both groups and exciting the crowds gathered to watch an air show. Field goals need not apply. Only touchdowns are acceptable. But the other side will not be as benevolent with their charges. The defenses must have agreed, as Gabriel Davis was wide open for a touchdown. The man responsible for defending him slipped. Good, there was far too much defense happening for it to continue. But Kansas City can still counter before the armistice of halftime. They have made it to field goal range, but Harrison Bucker's leg betrayed him. He shanks the kick. We are tied at half. As tension and uneasiness fills Chiefs and Bills fans, both franchises are emboldened to strike with everything they have. Air raids are seemingly impossible to stop. Worse, both defenses are without key components. Buffalo has been without Tredavious White since Thanksgiving due to injury. And Kansas City has lost the Honey Badger for the rest of the game as well. Concussions are a bitch. To start the third quarter, Mahomes will have the chance to prove himself first. He is managing well, but a fourth and one impedes his progress. Is Embiid the right word? We know he's going to convert it. Just like he impeccably converted this third down with magic and deception, but there's a flag for holding. Drive officially killed. They must bring out the field goal unit to go up by three. It would be shocking, but something even more stunning happens. A three and out. Kansas City's defense managed to hold. The Chiefs have a chance to bust this game open. The rushing attack will do the work here. On top of the blistering runs already done, McCall Hartman takes a sweep to the left and bursts through the closing gates. Touchdown, Kansas City. It would have been perfect, but Bucker's leg betrayed him again. He should really consider cutting it off for good luck. Concern is in everyone's face but Josh Allen. His response? Heat-seeking piss missile. Directly into the enemy's weak point for maximum damage. Even Gabriel Davis is stunned as to how that happened. It's now a two-point game. Patrick Mahomes can't be one-upped in his own stomping ground. Things go smoothly until the end of the third quarter, but then they are stopped. In the most surprising twist today, Kansas City punts. I didn't know they could do that in opposing territory. I also didn't know that the Chiefs secondary could hold up and force a coverage sack on Josh Allen. Josh Allen can be sacked? As Buffalo is forced to make their punter work, now we get to see the human joystick that is Tyree Kill. Look at him make the other team so burn their legs melt off. He takes this punt all the way back to the Bills' red zone. If there was a time for Buffalo's defense to make a stand, it's here. On third and one, Travis Kelsey is under center. But Buffalo holds firm. They are stuffed for a loss. The Bills ain't dead yet. Not when they're only down by five. Josh Allen has just under nine minutes left, but you know what they say. The best defense is by holding on to the ball. They're trying to make sure that the Chiefs don't get it back. Or if they do, it's with as little time on the clock as possible. Methodical. Precise. Unrelenting. That is the offensive style here. Everyone knows you can't give Mahomes time. Even a sliver of it. 
What button now? It's pressure time. Fourth and four and a field goal won't cut it. You know who solves this riddle? Josh fucking Allen. They seriously thought they could sack him. That's a funny story to hear. Although they can tackle Devin Singletary in the backfield to get to the two-minute warning. In an omen from the heavens, a Chiefs fan rushed onto the field and was suplexed to hell itself. He got on TV though, it's all good. However, that's not what's important. It's 4th and 13. I wonder if Josh Allen has an answer for this. Piss. Missile. Josh goddamn Allen to a wide open Gabriel Davis to give Buffalo the lead again. Davis was so unstoppable he juked the defender out of his fucking shoes. Just cut them off, he isn't worthy of them anymore. But they'll need to convert the two point conversion. Allen to try to make it a three point lead. Circling around at the 18. Here it comes. To the it. It like every good hero, Josh Allen has plot armor. He could have six men rushing him, yet somehow escape it and throw a strike to the end zone. But let's just say that Kansas City has a trick or two up their sleeves to counter. This is why the Bills needed Tredavious White. He might have been the only hope to stop a cheetah from sprinting down the field. We can ignore Tyreek's obvious taunting penalty because it's on the offense and everyone hates that damn rule. But the question now, did they leave Josh Allen too much time? He's down by four, but that defense has to be absolutely gassed after that last drive. And Allen will make sure it's so. The Chiefs D has seemingly been awestruck by Bill's might. I don't blame them for that. Recue the music. I smell another clutch moment coming up. Career-defining magic. Exposing a tired secondary to get Gabriel Davis his fourth touchdown of the day. A postseason record. This game proves it. The NFL is king. And now you see why. What other sport offers such incredible bullshit that captivates us all to addiction? Just make this game the Super Bowl. Forfeit every other game and call the winner of this one the champion. It deserves it. But now Mahomes has his biggest test yet. Only 13 seconds to get into some semblance of a field goal range. He does have all three timeouts, but it's a challenge that is near impossible. The good news for him is that Buffalo's scheming is garbage. They're leaving swaths of the middle of the field wide open. Tyreek Hill sprints nearly 20 yards to get them closer, but they'll need another miracle to get them into field goal range. To have one of those long range Hail Mary kicks. Got to throw it right away right now to someone in the middle. Down the middle. Oh my goodness! It's going to be a 48 yard attempt. How does a music track burn out? It's fucking digital. We can't just have Travis Kelsey make an incredible play with nothing behind it. So be it. All they need is for Bucker to make this kick and they're set. So uh, hundreds of thousands around the planet. The kick is good! His leg did not betray him this time. A two minute segment that will be told in legends. 25 points scored in two minutes. Over 45 yards of offense in two plays with 13 seconds left. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? This is true greatness. Worthy of 10 greatest games in one. Best for all neutral parties, we need overtime to decide a victor. Josh Allen has been undefeated in overtime coin tosses. Can he do it again? Buffalo, you're still the visiting team. What is your call? We have a coin, heads and tails. Tail. Tails is the call. Tails is this the call. This feels huge, right, with how good these offenses are? This might have been the biggest mistake Allen's made in these playoffs. He's had one of the best postseason stretches the NFL has ever seen. Yet he'll have to rely on the defense for him to get the ball again. Kansas City knows what they need to do. Finish them off. If they get possession back, they will surely be done, especially without Tyron Matthew. There might not be much energy left on either side, but this is truly sudden death. They're going to give everything they've got to finish this game and move on. Both sides are. What we're seeing are the stories told in days of old. Gladiators in the arena, bloodied and bruised by the scars of war. Patrick Mahomes is advancing. The Chiefs can end it here, with a precise pass to the end zone. Looking to the end zone for the win! He caught it! Ball game! An epic has concluded. Travis Kelsey has called game. 
Both teams were worthy of glories beyond compare, but the football gods demanded that one be eliminated. The pain in Buffalo is insurmountable. They played their hearts out in a quest for vengeance, yet still came up short. The Chiefs once again escaped certain peril to emerge victorious. And what a victory it was for them. Overcoming the loss of the Honey Badger and a field eager to trip up their secondary. Patrick Mahomes becoming a man possessed by demons of the gridiron to counter Josh Allen's holy light. And it's enough for Arrowhead to host another game against Cincinnati in the AFC Championship game. All Buffalo can do is ask themselves what they did wrong. The obvious answer is the terrible defensive scheming on the final two plays with 13 seconds left. Deep prevent guarding the sidelines when the Chiefs had all three timeouts. Not a good look when their receivers are that wide open to trek through swaths of field. Some argue that the Bills should have squib kicked it to them. But that was a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. If they squib it, sure a few seconds are shaved off, but they're starting out in much better field position than the 25. If they still manage to get into field goal range, people are asking why they didn't just kick it out of the end zone. There was little they could have done there. The other argument is in the overtime rules themselves, which is ironically how the Chiefs lost to the Patriots in the 2019 AFC Championship game. Kansas City proposed changes to the overtime rules in response, but Buffalo was one of the teams that rejected it. Now the tables truly have turned. The calls have come from fandom to change them again, but I don't believe they should. Football is a team game. If a team can't properly defend against an offensive attack with 13 seconds left or an overtime, the offense shouldn't get a chance to counter. All that would do is water down defenses more than they already are. There has to be some risk if you're unable to secure a victory in 60 minutes. And the coin toss is that risk. If Buffalo got a chance to score, this game would probably still be going on. We'd be playing this 300 years later in an endless war of attrition. Plus breaks for lunch. Buffalo will sting and drown their sorrows in liquor, but they are so close to greatness that it is intangible. They will be back here again. I don't see this as another failure for them, but the next step to solidifying their supremacy. Allen and Mahomes will fight in many more matches in the future, like Manning and Brady did before them and Bradshaw and Stabler before them. Buffalo will get their victories in time. I am assured of it. Regardless of alleged controversy, this is a game that will be talked about for generations. A name will eventually come for this classic. Perhaps something much better than the assaulted Arrowhead or 13 seconds to salvation. Please don't let it be those. I trust those more intelligent than I to come up with that. Let's keep it simple. Do you know what we will call this for now? The greatest game. Not in the tongue-in-cheek way, but as a stamp of legitimacy. Praise be to everyone who played in this match. You will all have your place in football, Valhalla.